On this next video, we're going to explore how to calculate the energy of the various energy levels in a Bohr atom, in a hydrogen atom. And so from a previous uh, video, we understood that the total energy of an electron was equal to this. We also found out, <coughs> excuse me, that the total, that the radius of any orbit was equal to this quantity right there. <coughs> so what we have to do now is we have to substitute the radius in our energy equation by what the radius is equal to in terms of these other variables, the mass and k and e and so forth. So let's do that. Let's plug that in. So we have the total energy of the electron is equal to minus k times e squared divided by 2 times, and plugging that in we get n squared times h bar squared divided by m k e squared. All right, now we're dividing by a fraction that's the same as multiplying by its, by its inverse. So the total energy is equal to uh, minus k e squared um, times m k e squared divided by 2 n squared h bar squared. All right, so we can simplify that a little bit. So we have e squared and e squared, k and k. So e total is equal to minus k squared e to the fourth power times the mass divided by 2 times n squared h bar squared. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, pull out the n squared in the denominator because we want to make it a factor of the, uh, the quantum number, the, uh, the uh, energy level number. So we have e total is equal to 1 over n squared times what's left. And what's left is this quantity right here, minus k squared, e to the fourth power times m, divided by n, oh, no, I already have the n squared out of there, so I have left a 2h bar squared. All right, plug in what those numbers are. So this is equal to 1 over n squared times minus k, and k would be uh, 9 times 10 to the ninth, and the units for k are uh, newtons, meters squared divided by coulomb squared, and we have to square that. And then we have E, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and that's to the fourth power. And we have the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Okay, that's all in the numerator, and divide that by eight, 2 times h bar squared, 1.055, and I'm kind of getting in your way probably. Uh, times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. Close that bracket there. And if we plug that into the calculator, let's see what we get. That's quite an equation. 9e to the ninth, and we square that, times 1.6e to the 19 minus, and we raise it to the fourth power, times 9.11e to the 31 minus, divide by 2, and divide by 1.055e to the 34 minus, and we have to square that, equals, and, ah, there we go. Uh, I'm a little out of room here, so let's continue over, over here. So that means that the total energy of that electron is equal to 1 over n squared times 2.172 times uh, 10 to the minus 18 joules. Of course, in terms of joules, it doesn't mean a whole lot, so let's convert that to electron volts. So times 1 electron volt divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So what do we get when we do that? So divide by 1.6e to the 19 minus equals, and look at that. The total energy is equal to 1 over n squared times minus 13.6 electron volts. What that means is the energy level for the electron at the innermost orbit is equal to minus 13.6 electron volts. So in this case, we could say that E1 is equal to 1 over 1 squared times a minus 13.6 electron volts, which of course is minus 13.6 electron volts. For the second level, E2, that's equal to 1 over 2 squared times minus 13.6 electron volts, which is equal to minus 3.4 electron volts. For the next level, E3, that is equal to 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9, times a minus 13.6 electron volts, and let's see, 13.6 
divided by 9 equals, yes, it's a minus 1.51 electron volts. And of course, the next level, E4, which is equal to 1 over 4 squared times minus 13.6 electron volts. So we have 13.6 divided by 16 equals, and it would be minus 0 0.85 electron volts, and so forth. So that is how you find the various energies of the various energy levels in a hydrogen atom. Just as a little um, kind of a, a glimpse of what's coming in the future, does this work for larger atoms? For example, uh, a lithium atom or a helium atom or something like that. And it turns out it does, provided you remove all but one of the electrons. So for example, if you take a helium nucleus, which has two protons and two neutrons, and you want to know what the energy is for the first level, with all but one of the electrons removed, of course, helium only has two, so if you remove one of the electrons, it's ionized, <clears throat> then the energy level for helium is equal to Z squared times the minus 13.6 electron volts. So what that means is we take the energy levels that we found here for the hydrogen atom, and for, like, say, helium, where the atomic number is 2, so Z equals 2 for helium, then the energy level for helium in the first level is equal to 4, 2, two squared, 4, times minus 13.6 electron volts. And of course, 13.6 times 4 is the energy for the first level for helium is equal to minus 54.4 electron volts. Okay. We'll cover this a little bit more uh, depth later on, but I just wanted to throw that in real quick to see that this actually works for other atoms as well, but you have to take into account that there's more protons in the nucleus, so you have to multiply those energy levels that we found over here by the atomic number squared. So for helium, it would be times 4. For lithium, it would be times 9, and so forth. For beryllium, it would be, it would be times 16, and so forth. But anyway, this is how you find the energy levels of the hydrogen atom.